Chapter 2 Rudderless There's a favorite entertainer of mine, a singer-songwriter from Ireland via Britain, Kenya, and all points between, who, while famous and lauded in certain circles worldwide, these days enjoys a quieter lifestyle while still possessing a fiercely loyal following. His voice quality is perfection. His lilting brogue paints oral pictures of saffron meadows and glorious fighting frigates hoisting a last farewell. But Roger Whittaker's strongest suit has always been in the writing. Roger Whittaker was my first, by example, introduction to the Law of Attraction, although I wouldn't know this until meeting Beth a decade later. I was a professional seaman during the 1980s and sailed the oceans of the world aboard massive cargo ships and passenger liners. I discovered Roger Whittaker, strangely enough, aboard one of those P&O liners. I was a civilian equivalent of a petty officer in the stewards department, and the Whittakers were assigned to my area aboard ship. I didn't learn until halfway through the three-week voyage that Roger Whittaker was a singer and songwriter of international renown. I would say that he was exceptionally friendly, treated his wife with a grace and love that was unlike any relationship I had seen until then, was kind and gentle with everyone who crossed his path, and was genuinely happy. One night, as we were anchored in Sydney Harbor awaiting quarantine clearance for entrance and debarkation the following morning, we entered into what became an hours-long conversation on his personal philosophy. Not that he forced it on me, I was definitely playing the role of interviewer, and he obliged by telling his life story and relating all of the miracles he had enjoyed at the many turns and crossroads along the way. And I resented it. I didn't let on at the time, and it was an enjoyable evening to be sure, but in my youthful arrogance I failed to see the gift of philosophy I was being handed, and it wouldn't be until Beth entered my life that I would connect the two and realize that this gentle man who was on a vacation was spending his time casting pearls before swine. I was a dunce. But I came around in the end, as anyone who is familiar with Beth and I already know. But pity, I couldn't see it at the time. And if I have a regret, it is that I did not come to the law of attraction sooner in my life. Mr. Whitaker expressed his positive take and his belief in all the universe gives us each day. He told me how thankful he was getting up every morning and looking forward to seeing, visualizing, his dreams come true. He described to me the castle yes, castle, that he wanted to own, a place where his wife and children and grandchildren would call the family seat, and where he would retire some day as a landed country gentleman. And I laughed up my sleeve. Granted, I never let on. I was and always have been a polite enough sort. But I found myself chuckling at the very idea. A castle. And he introduced me to what I would discover months later was one of his biggest hit records, a song called I Don't Believe in If Anymore. The song is a plea for the positive over the negative, and the chorus calls the word if nothing more than an illusion. He then said he never believed in if, only when. We said our goodbyes, and Mr. Whitaker set out on his Australian adventure. I sailed off to Auckland, as his positive energy and good thoughts and feelings faded into the horizon past the S.S. Oriana's wake. There's an old sailor's saying, aren't they always old? that goes, once a sailor, you don't feel right on land, but you don't feel right at sea either, so where is a sailor to go but down? I've seen it firsthand, and as much as I love the ships and the travel, I was beginning to feel like I didn't belong in either place, land or sea. Now I was rudderless, truly rudderless. I was washed up at the age of 24 and felt estranged by distance with my family had no romantic prospects to speak of, and was fighting life at every turn, never going with the flow. So I picked a place to move where I could find a ship any time I wanted to grab my sea bag and go, yet try and find a way to do what I thought I really wanted, just as soon as I could think of what it was. I went to Copenhagen, Denmark. Lots of ships, lots of rain, which I love, always have, and hopefully a life to discover, mine. Funny thing, foreign countries, they speak different languages, and the newspapers and magazines, not to mention the TV, aren't exactly easy to follow. Now I felt illiterate, too. Poor, pitiful, law-of-attractionless me. 
So I enrolled in a Danish language course and began to have numerous, incredible, magical, positive, protected by the universe experiences that were all laid out for me on the cosmic equivalent of a silver platter. And I complained. I told you, no LOA until Beth enters the scene, and even then I went kicking and screaming. Looking back, I remember another old sailor saying, we never seem to run out of those, God protects the fools and the sailors. I was given so much from the universe during my twenties as I plodded along, rudderless, in those years B.B., before Beth. It's a wonder, you know. My hope is that a college kid, or someone even younger, finds this book and truly listens and grabs the law of attraction, as I failed to do on the promenade deck of the S.S. Oriana with Roger Whitaker all those years ago. Don't make the mistake of wasted years before hard knocks and providence brings you to the law of attraction. Embrace it now, and live the life you deserve, the life the universe gave you on that glorious day you were born. And having said that, know that the law of attraction has no limits, and this is especially true when it comes to the subject of age. If you happen to be 99 years young and are just learning about the law of attraction, you can manifest it in your life right now. Don't be rudderless. The law of attraction is the steadiest rudder you will ever find. Oh, and Roger Whitaker, true to the law of attraction, got his castle. It's in Ireland.